on the sidelines of the United Nations Environment Assembly. Like this bag that I'm holding here uh, was actually woven. So Achenil Idachaba Obaro shows handicraft from Nigeria, woven by local women from Hyacinth, a plant that has invaded waterways in more than 50 countries across the world, including Kenya, where the UN summit is being held. The plant is actually very rich in methane, and methane is a greenhouse gas. So what people would, uh, you know, what we're trying to do here is actually mitigate uh, the effects of methane emissions to the atmosphere because if it's in a, an environment conducive for the generation of methane, that's bad to the environment. Climate change, greenhouse gases and pollution have been top of the agenda in this week-long meeting. In such events, innovations to deal with climate change and pollution are often displayed, like this transmitter used to check the quality of air you're breathing. So Laxo, how does it work? Yes, it's a small device for measuring uh, dangerous pollutants in there. So it has small sensors inside that measure the dangerous gases, fine particles, which are dangerous for your health. And using these uh, compact devices, the authorities can install them in large quantities and get a very good picture uh, of the air quality situation in a city. So this is a, a very important UN summit and heads of state and delegates who are here are saying that more needs to be done to mitigate what is an environmental crisis. Delegates here have been told that Africa is only responsible for 4% of the global greenhouse gas emission, yet more than 60% of its population is affected. That's why the continent's role in mitigating climate change is crucial. The UN wants wealthy governments to keep a promise of raising $100 billion annually for five years from 2020 to help poor countries adapt to a hotter planet. The specifics of this funding will be discussed further in the Climate Change Summit to be held in New York in September. The global GDP is roughly about 70% private sector and 30% public sector. So we're trying to solve a 100% problem with 30% of the money. That's never going to work. So we really need to focus on private finance. And once you create the right conditions for investment, which is possible through policy prescriptions, policy interventions by governments, then private finance will flow in a big way. Heads of state who attended this UN Environment Assembly said the world is facing an environmental crisis. We need to be very specific in terms of how to reduce emissions in our own national strategies with our businesses, our investors, via our laws. We need them to have specific solutions. In the end, delegates made several resolutions, including a plan for zero tolerance on plastic pollution in our oceans and a legal treaty to ban plastics from entering the sea. But the decisions made here depend on the political will of individual governments. Catherine Soy, Al Jazeera, Nairobi.